Hi there, Steve Coffin here. Uh, today I want to change the subject of my discussion a little bit away from sort of how to learn languages and the joys of language learning and focus a little bit on history because history is a big part of why I learn languages. I learn languages in order to better understand different cultures, in order to better understand different histories. And every time you study the history of a country or a part of the world, you are transported to that area. You start to see if, if you read the history of that country in the language of that country, from the point of view of someone from that country, you start to see the history of the world or the world from a different perspective a historical perspective, even a geographic perspective that's different from what we have typically in our own education systems. So for example, right now I'm listening to and reading an ebook on the history of Denmark. So all of a sudden Denmark in a way becomes the center of the world. And so I start to see that the Baltic there is almost like, you know, I hadn't really focused on it. It's kind of like the Mediterranean, but it's an area where you have a variety of countries around, you know, the Baltic Sea and you have Denmark over here, and you follow the history of countries like Denmark and Sweden that expanded and contracted over time, uh, you get a perspective. I hadn't realized, for example, that there is far more open sea between Denmark and England than there is between Norway and North America. Wow, in sudden perspective, because all of a sudden, if you look at the map and you say, well, how did the Vikings end up in North America back a thousand years ago. And then you realize that if you're a Viking from Norway, as opposed to a Viking from Denmark, that you can go from Norway to the Orkney or Shet Shetland Islands, to Iceland, to Greenland, and to North America, and you're never crossing as many, you know, kilometers of open ocean as you have to, if you're going from, some, from say Denmark to England. Just a different perspective. What we call the North Sea to the Danes is probably the West Sea. Uh, but at any rate, there's that perspective up there. I read a history book, unfortunately in English, but I'd love to do it in Greek, on the history of the Greeks, not just Greece, but the Greeks, because the Greeks have had, you know, activity all around the Mediterranean and, and the Black Sea. Here again, we talk about all of a sudden looking at the world centered on the Black Sea or the Mediterranean. And the Greeks had colonies uh, around the Black Sea, around the Mediterranean, you know, however many, 2,500 years ago. And so they have a certain, had a certain perspective on the world around them, different peoples and stuff like that. Even reading a history of say the Indian Ocean and then you realize the extent to which, you know, the coast of Africa and uh, Arabic countries, Iran, India, all of that, or as it is today, Pakistan, all of that is kind of connected around this ocean. So you start to see these oceans as kind of centers of trading activity and so forth and so on. Uh, when I, you know, was learning Persian and I had this wonderful series on the history of Iran, all of a sudden I, I see a, a, a center of the world and I read books about that part of the world and I see Central Asia as a center of the world with influence from, you know, China, Greece, from the time of Alexander the Great, Alexander of Macedonia, influence from, from uh, India, from the Islam, from the Arabic world. So it becomes a center of the world. So no longer do we see sort of North America or Western Europe as the center of the world. Or if you're studying Chinese and you look at the relationships between China and Korea, Vietnam, Japan, Mongolia, uh, all of a sudden that's the center of the world. So, and, and I haven't done much with the languages of Southeast Asia where they interact with, you know, India and China and, and other, you know, of course, the people who had lived there since uh, time immemorial. So all I'm saying is uh, when we learn languages through history, we also acquire this different perspective on the world and we become sort of multipolar in our view of the world. Not only do we become multilingual, but we, come, we become multicultural, multilingual, and multipolar in our understanding of how uh, world history developed. And so that's very enriching. It's just another example of how 
in language learning, the process is the reward, as I've said before. So as we're learning about the histories of these different countries, you know, where we're studying their languages, very often I'm in no great hurry to get to the end of whatever I'm listening to or reading. I, I miss, I will miss this history of Denmark once it's complete because it's, it's fun to be doing this, to be listening to it. Every time I go back to it, it's, a, it's an enjoyable process. Uh, if I could all of a sudden just bingo know everything that was, that was there, the language and the history and stuff, it would be less fun. It's basically a great source of enjoyment to be able to immerse myself in that sense. I'm also, by the way, I just started reading a book on ancient Rome, again in English, uh, but trying to imagine people in ancient Rome and, and uh, who are humans like us and had the same kinds of human interactions, but in an entirely different world. So there I'm reading it in English. Maybe one day I'll do it in Latin. Those who do study Latin are able to do it through the language, which is so much more enriching. So a big reason why I learn languages, uh, a big reason I think to learn languages is through the history. And of course, the perspectives that we get. I, I was just reminded of this, uh, you know, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden uh, will have def completely different perspectives on the events there in the Baltic, for example. Obviously, um, the Swedes and the Norwegians, like Norway was under Denmark for many years, then it was taken over by Sweden. Uh, they would rather, ended up rather preferring to be independent. It would be interesting to read this sort of history of that period, written by Norwegians, written by Swedes, written by Danes. Uh, when I was learning Ukrainian, obviously Ukraine was very much influenced by Poland, by Russia, and of course, so they would have their own Ukrainian history in the Ukrainian language, Polish history, Russian history, maybe the Lithuanians, I don't read Lithuanian, but they dominated that part of the world for a long time. And so they would have a perspective, not to mention the Crimean Tatars, who for most of, say, history of the last at least a thousand years, they were the dominant force in the southern part of what today is Ukraine. Uh, they ended up becoming very much a, a minority in Crimea and they were very unfortunately deported at one point by, by the Russians, but they would have a perspective. The Ottoman Empire would have a perspective. So again, uh, I'm repeating myself, but language gives us perspective, perspectives, different points of view on world history, and it's a major reason to learn languages and a major reason, sort of source of enjoyment for me in learning languages. So I just thought I would share that with you. That's all. Bye for now.